Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're comparing the Radeon 890M, the best AMD integrated graphics you can get with a budget AMD card, the Radeon RX 6500 XT, a somewhat controversial release, a 4 gig GPU with 4 PCIe lanes that when used in a PCIe 3.0 system can be absolutely decimated in some instances. But to be honest, the 6500 XT, I don't think it's that bad you know a lot of people hate on the card but it is getting cheaper now and it is certainly capable at lower settings that said i wouldn't necessarily recommend buying one but today is all about the 890m igpu versus the 6500 xt and we're going to start off with our like for like comparison basically i've used the 890m with four gigs of dedicated vram from the bios i'm using this with the ryzen ai 9 hx370 the ryzen 7 8700g is the other cpu used today paired with the 6500 xt 7500 megahertz of 32 gigs ddr5 with the 890m and 6400 megahertz with the 6500 xt so couldn't get things exactly the same but the gpu in both instances is the limiting factor our first result black myth the benchmark here, the lowest settings, 34 FPS for the 890M and 41 for the 6500 XT, with percentile lows that fall in favour of the discrete card. Next up we have the Black Ops 6 benchmark, this time I went with the basic preset. The 890M delivered what I think is a pretty impressive 72 frames per second, a 1% low of 55 and a 0.1% low of 51. For the 6500 XT we saw 11 frames per second more on average, with a 1% low of 59 and a 0.1% low of 53 so the percentile figures were actually very similar dips and drops with both graphic solutions today but overall the 6500 XT of course in PCIe 4 mode came out on top we tested PCIe 4 mode as well to start with but we will have some more data later on in the video and a few more comparisons to work with Let's move on to our next game now, Cyberpunk 2077, this time with the lowest settings of course. This is the in-game benchmark, 1080p, no upscaling was used here, so no FSR, anything like that, no Intel XESS. The 890M delivers at least 60 frames per second, on average at native resolution, 63. The 1% low is 41 and the 0.1% low is 25. Now this is a little bit stuttery here and there, some games aren't affected by assigning various amounts of VRAM in the BIOS or limiting the amount of memory that the iGPU can use but this one actually is and we'll discuss that a little bit later on with the 6500 XT running in PCIe 4.0 mode we saw an average of 76 so 13 FPS more on average a 1% low of 53 and a 0.1% low of 50 so it was definitely a smoother experience for this one too that said pretty impressive that the 890M can hit 60 FPS on average at least Next up we have GTA 5 which runs really well on the Radeon 890M iGPU with 112 FPS on average according to the benchmark. I think this game has like a 188 FPS cap, something like that. The 6500 XT can't quite hit it in PCIe 4.0 mode, 182 to be precise. That said, the percentile lows are once again much better with the 6500 XT, 74 and 62 on the 890M compared to 131 and 100 on the discrete GPU. Again though, I think it's a pretty impressive result for the 890M. Integrated graphics have certainly come a long way. Let's move on to our final result before we fire up the very exciting benchmark table that I'll show you in a minute. This time it's Red Dead Redemption 2. Now for some reason, the Percentile lows were all over the place with this one, with the 6500 XT. I'm using the Ultra Textures, everything else is set to lowest. We have the Geometry LOD set to max, the Grass level of detail was set to 2 out of 10, and TAA was set to medium. Now during this part of the benchmark run, we averaged 49 frames per second with the 890M. Uh, a 1% low of 28 and a 0.1% low of 22. When it comes to the 6500 XT, we saw a much improved average of 78, but those percentile lows weren't actually too different and in this case it felt worse playing on the 6500 XT because there was such a large difference between the performance numbers going from like 70 frames per second to 30 all of a sudden feels a lot worse than going from 49 to 30 let's say that 
That said though, the average was of course much improved and I think if you were to implement a frame rate cap, say 60 FPS on the 6500 XT, it would feel a lot smoother. We are just running into a, um, a VRAM limitation here and possibly a bandwidth limitation too. Some games are more sensitive to that than others of course, but it's a clear victory for the 6500 XT, at least in PCIe 4 mode. But let's see what happens when we assign the iGPU a little more VRAM and we include results from the 6500 XT running in PCIe 3 mode too. So what I have for you here is a very exciting chart. I spent ages on this. Please don't hate on it too much. We've actually got Cyberpunk, Black Myth, Wukong, Red Dead 2, GTA 5 and Black Ops 6 with the aforementioned settings. The settings I used just now in the video are basically applied here too at 1080p all the way through um, native resolution. I couldn't fit the actual settings in the uh, table as well here but hopefully you get the gist. So we'll start with Cyberpunk 2077. I actually went back into the BIOS and assigned eight gigs of system memory to the iGPU part of the chip. So essentially limited what the iGPU could use to eight gigs instead of four. Some games it improved things and others it did not. Cyberpunk was one of those. Our average went from 63 to 64. The percentile lows were very much improved. We've got 41 to 50 for that 1% low and 25 to 48 for that 0.1% low. This actually brings those figures more in line with the 6500 XT in PCIe 4 mode. In fact, the 890M with 8 gigs of VRAM assigned is pretty close in performance to the 6500 XT running in PCIe 3.0 mode. It is slightly lower on average, but I think it more than makes up for it with those increased percentile numbers and the experience certainly felt a lot smoother. That said, when running the 6500 XT on a modern system in PCIe 4.0 mode, well, that's gonna give you the best experience. Black Myth Wukong next, the 890M didn't really give us any more to work with, with 8 gigs uh, of system memory assigned to the iGPU. The 1% low was improved slightly and so was the 0.1% low, all within sort of margin of error. The 6500 XT running in PCIe 3 mode wasn't actually that worse off this time around. Again, some games don't really care as much as others. We saw an average of 40 FPS with a 1% low of 35 and 34 compared to 41, 36 and 34 uh, best case scenario. Red Dead Redemption 2 now, again, the difference between assigning four and eight gigs of VRAM for the iGPU wasn't really significant. In fact, the A90M performed a little worse this time around, perhaps within margin of error. Again, only slight changes. And the 6500 XT once again came out on top in PCIe 4 mode. As you can see in PCIe 3 mode, the discrete card was somewhat affected and actually ended up with worse percentile lows than that of the 890M. It's not just about average frame rates, of course, it is about consistency too. GTA 5 next, of course, the 6500 XT once again came out on top. In PCIe 3 mode, it wasn't that much worse, not in terms of the average, but the percentile lows were affected and our 0.1% figure dropped down to 73 with the 6500 XT in PCIe 3 mode, which was about the same as the 890M uh, with eight gigs of memory assigned to the iGPU. Finally, then we have Black Ops 6, which I think ran pretty well across the board. Again, the figures dropped a little bit with the 890M in eight gig mode. All of the figures did. Actually, the one and 0.1% lows, not quite sure what happened there, but it's still a pretty solid experience. And I don't think you can go too far wrong with this modern integrated solution. If you are buying a modern laptop that features this Strix Point GPU or you're purchasing a mini PC, something like that. That said, you could purchase one of AMD's cheapest currently available graphics cars and have a much better gaming experience across the board, at least in the games I've tested anyway. I'll be running a few more comparisons with the 890M very soon. A lot of you wanted to see the 1650, so we'll be doing that too. But as for this one, thanks for watching. I hope you find it helpful and interesting, and I'll see you all next time.